All right, tonight we're doing a late night stream. I'm playing a new game, Road Warden. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I've intentionally not really looked at it, except it looked really pretty. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hop in. Everyone knows to stay away from the wilderness. Most people would never risk a lonely journey. Road Warden's not only a Road wardens not only accept the struggle, they embrace it. They deliver messages, assist merchants, burn human corpses, and if possible, get rid of the beasts and highwaymen. They live on the road, die young, or retire early. It's a dangerous job, but a respectable one, and it pays well. I'll leave the safety of the city walls. Okay, let's see. Uh, I feel like for a first... Hi, Icy Waters. I feel like for a first playthrough, it should really be standard. So we'll do that. The wall is still standing. There are no wolves around, no stench of blood. Good signs. This should be the place you're looking for. You were supposed to meet with a group of soldiers, but you hear no voices, no sounds of labor. The gate is ajar, but the camp isn't safe. It may keep away the goblins and peddlers, but not beast folk nor trolls, and the night is near. Your, pa your palfrey breathes heavily. It had a long day. Uh, I feel like we're sneaky. I dismount and sneak to the gate. Let's peek inside. Your heavy boots hit the ground, and the pain of the long ride finally catches up with you. You stretch out, bringing your back and legs comfort. All you want now is a table, a decent chair, a nice mug of beer, and some warm stew. With any luck, your axe won't be needed here. Approach the gate. If it's a military camp, it doesn't look the part. Plenty of wasted space, and the fire pit is cold. Two people are sitting at the table, tired and disheartened. They're looking in different directions, paying no attention to one another. One of them is holding a cup. After a moment, you notice the quiet humming. You recognize the melody of a light-hearted drinking song from the city harbor. Oh, nice. I also got Violet. I've been absolutely loving it so far, but I haven't finished the story. Uh, this seems fine. Uh, they don't look like much of a threat. I can enter. It takes them a few breaths to glance in your direction. The first person greets you with a wave of his hand. There are bags under his eyes, his beard is messy. Despite his simple shirt, he's wearing durable, decent boots. A mace, with a head covered in iron, hangs at his side, but he doesn't reach for it. I take a look at the second soul. Just like you, she's wearing a gambeson, but hers is a bit loose, as if she took it off a corpse. Her head is shaven, as if she's protecting herself from flesh-eating bugs. Her eyes are weary, yet kind. She smiles. Considering the squad was sent here half a year ago, these two surely look the part. Though there should be more of them. Eight, you believe. Uh, Spiny Coin, the uh, vibe for this stream, or the vibe for uh, Scarlet and Violet? Because they're both very good so far. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I'm loving this so far, though. Uh, I'll let them tell me what's going on. I let them speak first. It's nice to see an unharmed traveler in this godforsaken shithole. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that on stream. <laughs> Makes me just a tiny bit hopeful. The bearded man's... Oh, can I hover? No. The bearded man's voice is strong yet timid. You'll be staying the night with us, I guess. We're soldiers, he and I, adds the armored woman. I feel like the text on them is a little bit lighter. I don't know if it is. Um, her moment switches from half asleep to relaxed. We'll do our best to keep the camp safe, but if you were to take the first watch, it would be a huge help. Travelers ought to help each other, wouldn't you say? You think for a moment. To fully rest, you'd need a good sleep. You know what? That's true, I see. We're going to say shit on here. Uh, if we take first watch. I feel like I'm helpful. I could do that.
Fantastic. She rubs her hands together. I don't remember the last time I had more than half a night of sleep. The hours before midnight should be the calmest. Just wake us up if anything happens. The man flashes you a wide smile. It's easy to wake us up. Just yell. He drinks from his mug. And I ask them about their lieutenant. You wonder how to phrase your question. Okay, okay, we're actually getting into some mechanics. So we can be friendly, playful, distanced, intimidating, or vulnerable. Whenever you meet new people, you can influence how they perceive you by selecting one of these attributes. What do you guys think? Uh, how are we going to play out of these five? I might pick one at random, honestly. Uh, violent. <laughs> I guess intimidating then. Violence. Okay, all right, that's what we want. Uh, we'll be intimidating. I'd rather speak with someone who's not going to waste my time. All right. Uh, what's up with the tone? The man scowls at you, though he doesn't reach for his mace. We have nothing against you. Just ignore it, adds the second soldier, turning towards you. It's me you need to speak with. Are you a mercenary? I'm your new road warden. Are you now? That explains a bit. As long as you keep the roads safe from goblins and wolves, it doesn't matter that you're an ape ass. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. I have a feeling uh, Spiny's going to pick that one up. She stands up, resting her head hand on the hilt of her sword. Where is your mount, Road Warden? It's waiting outside. So unsaddle it before it falls asleep. She glances at the gate, then at her companion. Her voice is strong, her shoulders straight. I expect you're looking for directions. I'm Lieutenant Tulia. I'm... Ooh, okay, here's the name. Leto is the default. Reminds you of Savory? Yeah, a little bit. We'll just do Thaumaturgy. The Lieutenant nods and crosses her arms. Well, let's talk after you bring your beast. We should also prepare for the night. The, the soldier in the shirt also rises to his feet. You'll have to sleep on the ground, under the stars. Hmm. I like the stars. Uh, I need to get used to it anyway. It feels nice. You walk through the gate. Your mount looks around and snorts anxiously. Not many humans could ride a horse. It's not only taller than you, but also bulky, as heavy as it is strong. You can get into the saddle with a single breath, but most people wouldn't know where to even begin. From every side, it's a wall of flesh. Horses were brought to the Dragonwoods from the conquests in the south. They can trot for a long time, but won't outrun some of the local monsters. Your palfrey needs you to survive, but without it, you too would be lost. I want it to feel- I love my horse already. It's my only companion here. I want it to feel at ease. It takes a few steps towards you, scolding you with another snort. You scratch the bottom of its neck with strength and confidence, just the way it likes. Humans see useful animals and even pets as monsters in disguise. Getting emotionally attached to them is believed to lead humans to their doom. But you know that horses need companionship. So I speak to it gently and lead it to the camp. A gamer for life. I also agree. There's a uh, nefarious and mysterious individual by the name of Spiny Coin lurking about. I'll pay ten gold coins to anyone that can eliminate him. But gamer, how are you doing? You end up next to the fire pit. Removing the saddle makes the horse nicker with relief. You take a couple of minutes to examine its back, just in case. While the riding equipment is not that heavy for such a strong animal, with enough time it starts to chafe. You wish it had something better to eat than this shabby grass. You should look for an inn. But I need to unpack. You haven't brought that many things, and you lost one of the sacks while fleeing the crimson corpse eaters. Oh, that sounds cool. Worst of all, you have no rope left, but maybe the soldiers could share some. Wouldn't cost more than a dragon bone. 
Aside from the travel set, you own a few valuable possessions, essential for your trade. Ooh, okay, we get some... Yeah, gamer, I'm pretty sure you do pay our rent. <laughs> All right, guys, we've got fighter, mage, or scholar. I spent my savings on decent combat equipment. I have a fine gambeson, an axe made of steel, and a reliable crossbow with quarrels. Mage, I have talismans that help me use my powers, as well as an iron axe and a worn gambeson. Or scholar, I carry writing instruments and alchemical ingredients, as well as an iron axe, a worn gambeson, and a healing potion. So I get iron axe with either of these or a steel axe. Uh, I don't think we need to know more about the classes. Please don't make me homeless. Terrible. That's deplorable behavior. Can I get a ban on spiny coin, please? <laughs> Yawning in chat. Um, any opinions, actually, though? Fighter, major, scholar. We've already been kind of uh, having some aggressive dialogue, so fighter might make sense. But if anybody feels strongly about another one, I wouldn't mind picking mage or scholar as well. Ban Snorlax? Hell no, I love Snorlax. Fighter? Yeah, we're, we're gonna go fighter. Ban Tingle? I would. He's too famous to come to my stream, though. Um... Okay, I've got options. Okay, inventory. I can eat food, drink potions, and use items from this menu. So we've got some supplies, a pouch with coins, gambeson and travel set, an axe, and a crossbow. Alright. You unpack and inspect your belongings. Your water skin isn't pierced, the spare clothes are still there. Just in case, you take a look at your wooden bowl and mug, your cape, tinderbox, bandages, food, rations, knife. Nothing special or too cumbersome. From time to time, your routine helps you avoid mistakes. But this doesn't make it any more exciting. Oh, hey, Middle Druid! Thank you for the lurk! I return to the soldiers. They're at the table again, observing your beast and chatting between themselves. Your stomach growls at the sight of them, eating out of wooden bowls. There's no meal for you, but you can sit down on a tree log. Uh, do we want to eat with them? I can, I can just say I don't want to eat with them. <laughs> okay, so the names are highlighted. You can kind of tell they're like white. That's kind of cool. It's weird you can't hover them though. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it's my armor. Oh, and a clock. Oh, it's like a little sundial. That's cute. Devour. <laughs> so I eat my own rations. I feel like if I ask them first, I might be able to like eat somewhere else in the camp or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I'll eat. I'll eat my own rations, so we're nice and healthy. I'm I'm down a quarter heart just to start out. Oh, and I have nourishment now. Okay, keeping your stomach full will make you stronger. Starvation won't allow you to restore vitality. Okay, pretty pretty standard. You can't heal if you're hungry. In the last inn, you get a smelling loaf a smelling loaf of dark bread decorated with sunflower seeds. It tastes great even by itself. When on the road, most people have to think of themselves. Soldiers live with and for their companions, constantly on the move from one part of the realm to another, making sacrifices to protect the group as they face dozens of hideous creatures. Their lives are filled with discipline, hardship, and camaraderie. Road wardens, on the other hand, learn how to work by themselves. They seldom engage in open combat, patrolling the same roads for years. They help the settlement stay in touch, but maintain commerce, settle down, forge friendships. When there are no laws to follow, they use their own judgment. Different responsibilities and different lifestyles. <laughs> Y'all are being crazy in chat. Um, 
All right, I eat slowly, enjoying myself. In the meantime, I speak with Tulia. She's focused and chooses her words carefully. She looks away only when she gathers her thoughts. I can only say as much as I know, and that's not much. She nods towards the other soldier. As you can see, there's not a lot of us left. At the beginning of summer, there were eight of us, including our previous lieutenant. Five are dead, and one has run away in tears. That's me. We're also strangers in this land, adds her companion. Any piece of information will help me do my job. The man leans forward. His legs shake nervously. He sounds like a kid asking a bard to sing one more story, tell a joke, or do a magic trick. Whatever it takes to escape from boredom. His untrimmed beard hides a much younger face than you originally thought. What did the officials tell you? I expect not that much. No soul governs these lands. All right. Uh... Uh, sure, I'll, I'll tell him whatever lore I have. That seems good. You tell the soldiers how little guidance you've received. Since this area is too far away from... Oh, what is this? Hovlevon? Hovlevon? Hovlevon. To keep it under control, you are warned that it's untamed and unknown. Who knows how many villages, bandits, or monsters may be found in these unmapped hills and forests. From time to time, new people come here to look for boundless opportunities. Most of them never return. Do they turn into walking corpses, or find what they're looking for? <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a slap command. I might make one after that. No soul could tell me, so I was looking for your guidance. The lieutenant drinks from her cup and crosses her legs, ankle to knee. Seeing her chair makes you doubt she'll ever find a comfortable position. Where should we start? Okay, I can ask her, like, a ton of stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, I know we need a rope. I've lost my rope. Could you spare one? You're in luck. She heads towards one of the crates and moves aside a large linen sack revealing a rope. She brings it back and nonchalantly sits back down on her chair. Take it. I was planning to leave it behind. Take a closer look. A fine rope. A regular rope made of hemp fibers. It's worth zero. Oh, I guess I have to offer food. All right. Tulia leans forward and rests her forearms on her thighs, looking down with clasped hands, then meets your eyes. I'd normally refuse, but we need some decent food. Every day I'm searching through our groats, looking for worms and putitry. We forage, but it's not a great spot. Some food rations will brighten up a foggy day. For now, you leave the rope on the table. Uh, <laughs> ask about the camp. The story is brief. Some merchants built the camp to have an extra stop for mules and donkeys, just between the inn and the southern villages. There's plenty of grass here and a pond nearby. When the peninsula grew more dangerous, the camp, food aban er, the camp stood abandoned, from time to time serving as a shelter for travelers. The bandits came here in spring, further paralyzing the exchange of information between the northern and southern settlements. Since these highwaymen are no more, the situation may reverse. Time will tell. You can sleep here whenever you want, the man concludes their tale, though don't expect to wake up without pain in your back. No maidens. Or maidness, as uh, Spiny Coin would have you believe. <laughs> Let's see. What happened to the previous guy who had my job? Tulia takes a deep breath. Aren't you a bit late for a rescue mission? We haven't heard from him for almost half a year. The soldiers speak for a bit between themselves, trying to get their story straight. They confirm that he had stopped by their camp a few times, but stopped showing up at all in early summer. The bearded soldier starts to scratch the table with the tip of his knife, without looking at you. I don't remember his voice. Always busy, drowning in things to take care of. He would sit somewhere, sharpen his sword, fix his loud mail, clean clothes, or write notes on that wax tablet of his. Yep, and leave it dawn. Unlike us, Asteria never gets bored. Tulia lets out a joyless chuckle. He's secretive, but some of the locals speak about him warmly. Maybe he just doesn't like us. Sounds like you're not sure if he's dead or not. 
If anyone knows, they won't tell us. Maybe someone is keeping him in a basement. The man carves with passion. We haven't seen him or his saurian. Something ate them, I bet. The officials have tr the officials have hired you, right? They don't expect him to return. Richer road wardens often use four-legged, meat-eating saurians as their mounts. They have to be tamer tamed and trained since their hatching, but unlike horses, can easily defend themselves from many monsters. At least your palfrey is fast and reliable and won't suddenly sink its teeth into an innocent pass into an innocent passers-by. Do you know what he was looking for? Maybe he left you a message. Neither one of us had any insight into his dealings, says Tulia. My predecessor left me no clues. We also took a look at Asterian's stuff. Wait! She raises her open palm. I almost forgot. She stands up and heads to a nearby tent. He has kids in a village near Hovlevan. I was planning to take all his things there. A pouch, a second spear, a decent bow, some potions, quite a treasure. She glances at you, but I would much prefer to bring them the truth about the fa about their father. <laughs> so you want me to find out what happened to him in exchange for his stuff? Here's the catch. She dusts off the hilt of her sword. We've hired a messenger to ask the com commanders for further orders. Since she hasn't returned and you know nothing about her, she either ran away or something happened to her. She sighs with resignation. We are meant to stay here until fall. What do you think? Come see us. Tell, of, tell us what you've learned about the man, and we'll get back to Hollivan together. Hoblivan. You think about your real mission. You are planning to return to Hoblivan in the early fall anyway. If he's alive, I don't think he's going to be happy about me taking away all of his possessions. True, but he's considered dead. I doubt he'd begrudge you anything, and who knows? You may just find his shell lying on the roadside tomorrow. He wears mail, uses a spear mostly, maybe five feet tall but stout, a long red beard, short hair, pale face, who rarely smiles. Sorry, I had to cough really quick. It's a bit, bit late at night, so my throat's a little itchy. She glances at her companion, but after he adds nothing, she sits down and stretches out her legs. So find out what happened to him. Dead, alive, left, just let me know. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's see what happened to the rest of them. The man shrugs. Bandits happened, and monsters. A strong band, though. His companion troops in. When we got to the peninsula in spring, we saw some people living in this camp. The lieutenant decided to avoid it and took for an inn. We had to travel through the night for a bit. The bearded soldier scoffs and crosses his arms, but she carries on. If he had decided otherwise, we all would have died that day. The innkeeper explains that the camp is a trap and that the armed ones pretend to be soldiers. Stay there at night and lose everything you have. Sounds like slave hunters. Tulia sighs. Very much so. They killed some and took others away. Who knows where? They were letting the northerners go, hoping to avoid their wrath. It kind of works, added the soldier. We asked them for help, but they refused. We had to clear the entire camp on our own, and that's why three of our people died. Don't exaggerate. It's not like the lieutenant didn't make a mistake. He wanted to get rid of them and take over their camp. We didn't know the enemy well enough. We were outnumbered, and they had an ice mage among them. She looks at you. At least we cleared the road and saved lives. You mentioned monsters as well. <clears throat> Nothing that would surprise you. Those of us who survived the skirmish were young, too inexperienced to spend a summer on this to spend a summer in this place without a good leader. And they didn't trust me. One of them got caught by a treant. Another one ignored my orders to perform some sort of ritual hunt, so a werebear tore her to pieces. The last one tried to act tough, didn't tell us that he had cut his hand while cleaning his gambeson. She lets out a ghastly chuckle. We had to cut it off, and he was so ashamed he decided to walk north, find a new life, and disappear. Idiot. What a colorful journey. 
The man tries to drink from his mug, but it's empty. Uh, yeah, we'll praise them a bit. Um, you've made this place safer. Barely. Trulia seems tired. And who knows if it was worth the lives and effort. Uh, we'll ask him about the peninsula. That's another quest thing. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I know, and you'll be the judge, says the lieutenant. How long did it take you to get here from the city? On a decent palfrey, I'd guess it would be three, four days? When you confirm, she continues, from here, you can reach the coast in about a day as long as you don't make any stops. Do you know the situation? Why no ships can get here? Oh, we've got a bot, Spiny. Could you ban them? Uh, you nod. The sea route allows uh, Havlavan officials to keep in touch with the coastal villages. Collect taxes, move the soldiers, collect lumber, and deliver tools. But maintaining order on a wild coast such as this one is like filling the ocean depths with coins. He's not a bad mod. Uh, he was just gone for just a second. Uh, because of the rocks, you can hardly stop a ship five miles from the shore, and boats can't get much closer. She nods. I don't know much about fishing, but there's not that many people living by the shore, and they don't crave to stay in touch with the city folk. As she pauses, her companion carries on. No soul from the north ever came to the camp, but when we travel to the roadside inn, Pelt of the North, they're happy to trade, and to play dice. Ten years, a hundred years. No amount of years is too many. <laughs> I would eat a slowpoke tail. Like, just as a quick aside, I would definitely try that. It's it's definitely delicious. Like, you've seen that in, in the show. Like, they look tasty. Alright. Why not just stay, stay at one of the settlements? The man clears his throat. I mean, you know, we're to guard this road. This camp is our post, and, well, he turns towards Tulia. She lowers her voice. Don't take it the wrong way, Thaumaturgy, but are you a devout soul? Okay, let's see. What is our internal compass? This is some long options. Okay. So I believe that people should unite their strength to overcome the threats of nature and dark magic. Everyone will be judged for good and evil deeds. Uh, I can just be part of the United Church. For many years I've supported a monastery that does its best to advance minds, can, uh, mind can, mankind's spiritual growth. Artistry, herbalism, magic research. So order of truth. Uh, I have a place in my fellowship, so I value my community. Uh, paganism or atheist, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I don't know. I think the monastery seems like the coolest option. That or the fellowship, I think. You need a cherubi? I would. I'd really try any Pokemon. <laughs> like, if someone cooked me pretty much any Pokemon and was like, I made this for you, I would eat it. Yeah, and Violet, they do eat cloths. I would also definitely eat a cloth. That sounds tasty. <laughs> like a cloth sushi roll? I bet that's tasty as heck. Alright. I think I'm going to go with the Order of Truth. For many years I've supported a monastery that does its best to advance mankind's spiritual growth, artistry, herbalism, and magical research. Oh, I see. She hesitantly looks away. I don't know much about that river of faith, but I'm sure we're not that different. I'm a unite myself. She says with a sort of pride in her voice, so she follows the United Church. Maybe just explain what you're thinking of. The people here are disquieting. Every few words, she taps the table with her finger. Their traditions won't help them negotiate with the officials. Here. She starts to draw lines with her index finger, as if she's pointing at an invisible map. The peninsula is connected with roads like a big circle. 
In the northwest, you'll find a weird village in a bog. It's not exactly pagan, I don't think. It even have a priest who has a priest who claims to be an Eremite. You nod. She means a fellowship. They do crazy shit, her companion chips in. They use the dead to cut down trees and dig in soil. Once I saw it, I begged to never return there. That sounds like a place that Spiny Coin would set up like in a D and D campaign. He is always all about necromancy. <laughs> like that's definitely something like specifically made for you. <laughs> I see. For real, for real. That that's definitely you. Uh, you've heard tales such as this one since you were a child. If an isolated settlement manages to survive without a city's influence, its customs and traditions grow more and more alien. Every generation learns how to adapt to the dangerous conditions they have to deal with, and the rustic pagan traditions muddy their river of faith. The United Church often warns its members about the crazy druids, necromancers, and blood mages, the bringers of doom, the traitors to humankind. Um, were they able to speak with these necromancers? You can see why we were not eager to go there if we could avoid it, the lieutenant chuckles. Maybe they'll be more welcoming to a road warden. The roads are dangerous, with little to no shelter. People need your help. The man in the shirt turns a bit and points a finger to the northwest. If you're heading to the undead village, you'll get to an inn first, and soon. Tulia nods. Pelt of the north is a safe place. You can talk with the innkeeper or the guards. Ask them about the road. Uh, we'll ask about the east. She stares off across the camp. Hard to tell. We went there only once. There were hills, forests, rivers, and we saw a tunnel sculpted in leaves and branches, but we did not enter it. Wilderness all around. And any monsters worth mentioning? Anything to catch my mount? We saw all sorts of beasts. The man starts to count on his fingers. Goblins, treants, cats large and small. Runners, howlers, wolves, spiked boars, mooflin eaters, griffins, but we've managed to stay away. Some could catch up with most mounts, truly glances at her companion. Though a palfrey should be fine. The trees are so tall that the flying creatures keep the coast and the mountains. There's not that many humans around, and the animals are busy fighting amongst themselves. They, fart, they fight more for food than territory. The soldier cracks his knuckles. Don't provoke them and ride fast. Just count on luck. That's all I need to know. She nods. I'm afraid we can't do more for you. Uh. Yeah, uh. I feel like we can come investigate her backstory. Well, we'll go ahead and look. How did she become a lieutenant? That's not much of a story, honestly. She looks at her hand, which is currently rolling a mug over the table. In the city, there's a strict order of, what should I call it? She exchanges looks with her companion, but he can't help her. Well, leadership succession, I guess. Havlavin, chief selects commanders. Those select lieutenants, and those put their soldiers in order of priority. If a lieutenant dies, they get replaced by the next soldier in line. And you were his successor. Nah, not exactly. When we fought the bandits, our lieutenant was hit by a slingshot. His boyfriend had jumped to help him, but failed to protect either of them from a spell. It was like a ball of ice that hung above them and exploded, piercing their heads, completely avoiding their shield. Really unpleasant. She pauses. And you were the third one in line, is that right? Uh, basically, yeah, she says without enthusiasm. I didn't plan to become a leader, though. I'll get demoted once we return to the city. I prefer to follow, anyway. I know everything I need to know. Are you sure, says the bearded man? We may not be around the next time you come here. Uh, yeah, you're fine. We should prepare for the night anyway. Uh, okay, I can reread text. That's nice. I agree. Tulia sighs with relief. And may you do better than Asterion did. Stay vigilant. She winks at you, shattering the mask of a soldier. Thank you. You go to the barrel and splash water on your face which makes you even more aware of how much you need a bath. After the night, it will only get worse. Your horse is already napping, still too anxious to lay down. I prepare for my watch. 
The soldier in the shirt is eager to guide you. Just observe the area. There's plenty of griffins around, though they won't try and jump over the palisade. Probably. Better watch out for the apes. They climb up and carry out any food they can find. And there's this one really loud were-elk that keeps smelling the wall, though it has never tried to get in. He points to the gate. The lieutenant and I will block the entrances. They're quite heavy, so if anyone comes here looking for shelter, better call us to help you out. And if this someone is being chased by wolves or anything, better throw them the rope instead. He scratches his head. If it gets cold, feel free to make a fire, and the best place is in the watchtower. You may want to put a blanket there or something. The watchtower. He gives you a long, puzzled look. Oh, here. He points at the pile of crates. Just climb up to the tallest one. You'll have a great view. He snickers, but you know you won't be able to spot any movement under the southern part of the palisade. Maybe the real danger comes from the north. Oh, it changed to crickets. That's cute. You put your blanket on the tallest crate and sit down. The night is warm, but the sporadic summer breeze brings gentle refreshment. From time to time, your back aches and you have to force yourself to keep your eyes open. The light of the moon helps you focus on the tall grasses. For most of the time, you spot smaller critters and birds, but there are exceptions. At one point, you see a three-horned deer trying to challenge another one. Before they crash their antlers, a two-legged dragonling appears, leading its much smaller offspring. The furry beasts try to intimidate the predators with roars and aggressive head movements, and after a few moments, both sides walk away slowly, not willing to risk the fight nor admit to defeat. I don't let it distract me. I keep looking around. You hear the death screams of distant prey and the mating calls of monkeys. Runnies, runners are chasing a gray hare. A group of musk oxen, yeah, musk oxen lazily chew the grass, preparing themselves to sleep. A dusk fox is running together with a lynx, making playful screeches. Thankfully, you never have to intervene. You just sit, watching the not-so-distant forest, trying to outlast your sleepiness. You can only guess how much time has passed. Once you feel you've had enough, you climb down and go to a tent, waking the bearded man with a couple of words. You confirm that nothing important has happened. I look for a place protected from wind. I use my bag as a pillow, put my blanket on the ground, and cover myself with my cloak. You aren't used to sleeping in such harsh conditions, but it's better than nothing. The winter, the weather is gentle. Maybe you won't catch a cold. The stars instantly inspire your dreams, both with their splendor and by making you look for patterns and shapes among them. Your job starts tomorrow, and I focus on the real goal of my journey. The merchant guild wants to take control of this realm. Your wardening duties are secondary. First and foremost, you need to explore the peninsula. Learn about the territory, resources, and threats. Get to know the locals, and if you can, convince them to consider negotiations with, Hob with Hoblevan officials and traders. Could the tribes resist the soldiers or be a threat to the priests of the United Church? Are there any forbidden practices that need to be eradicated, such as blood magic, necromancy, robbery, or slavery? At least I have time. Forty days, to be exact. I need to be as thorough as I can. Once you finish your reconnaissance, you should speak to Tulia and return to Havlevon. There, you'll report back to your employers and get your reward. In the meantime, you have your own goal to pursue. Oh, Kag gets a pick like my motivation. That's really cool. This reminds me a, a lot of Dungeons & Dragons, actually. Okay, I need to gather extra coin to help a person I care about. I can retire early to live in prosperity and safety. I want to become a major player in the Merchant Guild. I want to be a hero. I want to help people. I have a difficult past and I want it to be forgotten. Um, does anyone in chat feel strongly about any of these? I'm trying to think. Which one would be the best? We'll do, uh, we'll do the top option. I need to gather extra coins so I can help a person I care about. 
Your half-asleep senses are catching the sounds of the wild forest. Your instincts keep you alert and anxious through the pleasant, humid, late summer air evens it out slowly. You're thinking about your goal, but you need to gather your strength. I can't travel during the night. Okay. And I can press the sleep button to rest. Oh, it's up here. That's cool. All I can do now is rest. I did want to look. Appearance. Okay. So I've got vitality, nourishment, armor, and appearance. So people can see how pretty I am. Safety. All right, sleeping on the ground. Your blanket won't be much of a bed and the palisade barely covers you from the wind. Sleeping here will be severely uncomfortable. I mean, I don't really have a, a choice. Okay, so it takes a quarter of a heart, two food, and one of my pretty points. All right, that's fine. You and Icy can share a bed. You and Icy can go share the couch. I'm gonna sleep in the bed. <laughs> All right. You're surrounded by sunlight. Your back, your back begs you to stand up. Before you fully wake up, you smell a roast. No burning meat. Burning rotten meat. Disgust crawls towards your consciousness. You stand up. Normally, you would dust off your cape and blanket, but your instincts are stronger than your routine. Your horse is looking around nervously. Your bags are where you left them, and you see an open gate. Oh, let's go see what's going on. Both soldiers are standing near a humble pyre. The man in the shirt looks at it con uh, contemplatively. Tulia is the first one to address you. Thaumaturgy? She greets you with a nod. We used the horse's manure for the flames, so don't worry about cleaning it up. You see a corpse among the flames. It's impossible to tell if it belongs to a male or a female, but it was an adult. The burning process won't be over for a couple more hours. A traveler or an undead? The latter, a, a young one. She lacked the pneuma to understand that she couldn't get inside the camp without climbing. I stabbed her with a spear from a safe distance. She shifts her weight. One more fog and she'd be a real threat. Even now it took a couple of hits to knock her down. Sooner or later, every human shell wakes up, gaining more strength with each soul it devours and each moment it spends in the fogs. Burning the dead is not just a religious practice, it's a necessity. Soldiers, priests, village mayors, and even road wardens. Making a large pyre takes a lot of time, but it saves lives. Tulia calls this undead a she. Most knights hesitate to do so. I see, what do you mean what? Time for me to leave. Frogod does Snorlax have a musk in bed? I don't know what that means. But it's time for me to leave. Running away from the reek, huh? I don't blame you. She looks again at the fire. Find us here if you learn what happened to Asterion. We leave once the fall comes, if not sooner. Safe travels. Those words make you stop. An old, old farewell, mocked in a number of songs and tales, yet you hear no scorn in Tulia's voice. She observes the fire with one hand on her hip, the other on her chin. Spiny actually does smell pretty good most of the time. I prepare myself for the journey. I said most. The other, the other times he's really stinky. <laughs> You somehow miss the fact that your mount is already saddled and warmed up. You double-check the equipment, but you don't need to fix anything. The soldiers were diligent. Normally preparing any palfrey for a long journey takes a lot of time. You put on your gambeson and make sure your axe is tightly attached to your belt. Then get in the saddle. The palfrey knickers, ready to leave. It's time for you to get on the crossroads north from here. I guess we're going north. Okay, your travel button. Travel forward. Defending Spiny to keep him around? I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Even at a later hour, you wouldn't expect to meet any travelers in the valley. The warm summer breeze lures your mount forward, but the serene chirping of birds is quickly replaced by the distracting screeches and gurgles coming from further down the path. You soon find the pack of four-legged griffins. They're larger than foxes and merge the features of birds and furred beasts. Each one is of a different size, coat, and colors, and their temperaments are just as varied. 
Their fronts are covered with vivid feathers, while their rears have darker fur. Their wings are massive, making them impressive jumpers, but they're far too heavy to fly. About two dozen beasts are yelling, brawling, and chasing each other around, blocking your path. I consider my options. No maidens. Yeah, I, the icy spiny has no maidens. Can't confirm. Uninvited from Mario Kart. I see you're reinvited to Mario Kart. You can't enter the forest blindly. If these or other creatures were to chase after you, the thicket would be disastrous for your horse. There are reasons why travelers stay as close to the main roads as possible, and why adventurers move in groups. Usually the safest approach would be to stay where you are and wait for the pack to get hungry. It may, however, take up to a couple of hours. You're thinking about your conversation with Tulia. You've a lot to do, and time may be of the essence. Okay, so if we have any vitality points, we can use the warrior's training to access unique interactions. Okay, so if there's a dice, then it has a random chance. So if I have any vitality points. So I have two, so I'm at half health. Okay, guys, I do need some advice. So we can we can use like a force interaction since we picked that. Or we can try to ride through or I can wait it out. I don't want to wait it out. I think that's basically out. And shooting a crossbow bolt I think uses up like one of my bolts. I think I only have a couple. Ride through. What if we use the force center? Like, that gives me apparently a unique interaction, though, if I use force. Actually, yeah, I would- I think I would normally ride through, but I do want to see what the- like, what the warrior interactions do, since they're unique. Violence is always the answer? Alright. I see I trust you. We're gonna we're gonna get through them. Getting through them should be easy enough. Initially, your horse completely trusts your guidance, though after a few more steps it snorts. You prepare your axe and get ready to push away any griffin willing to jump on you. Once you get in the middle of the surprised herd, your mount squeals and gallops forward. The creatures in front flee, but others try to jump at you from both sides. You kick two of them away, and while the third one gets close, its beak lands only on your boot. The hard leather keeps you safe. You ride right away, and the griffins can't keep up. You hear their screeches when your mount slows down. I don't give them an opportunity to catch up with me. Hell yeah, guys, violence was the answer. Kick them in the face. The road splits. According to what the soldiers have told you, you may find a safe inn by turning left. The forest to the right is lush, and the trail overgrown. Kids used to have this song. How did it go? The harshest pathway leads to the dragon's lair. Those who search for treasure, do you truly dare? The signpost in front of you doesn't make your situation much clearer. It was put there by someone who can't write, for folks who can't read. Covered in an old red paint, it points east. Blood there, as people say. Danger to be found. There's not a soul to ask for guidance. So I look at my horse. <laughs> oh! Okay, guys, what's our horse's name? What are we? What are we naming the horse? Uh, we're gonna name. I see. We're naming the horse after you. Because you've been in chat like the whole stream. Unless you would like to pick a different name. I'm gonna take the snakehead emote as a yeah. <laughs> All right. I see as peaceful as you stroke its mane. Maybe it can't help you choose a path, but you've spent many years together. Happy to go on, it takes a couple steps forward. You spot a few berry shrubs and wild cabbages, but they still need at least two weeks to gain maturity. Oh, so I bet I can come back and like get food here. No, horse is gonna live. We'll protect the horse at all costs. 
Okay, so time to make a turn. So we have to go to travel. So are we going west or east? I already forget which way they said the inn was. Uh, easy? No, I need like east or west, not easy. <laughs> east? Weast? I thought you said weast. West is be West us best? Uh. I'm gonna go weast up here. Um, we'll go. So we have basically one vote east from Spiny, one vote west from Spiny, and one vote weast from Icy. <laughs> um, I we're gonna go east. I feel like that's good. We can handle like a little bit of danger, cause like we're pretty good. Plus, like we only have like one party points over here like we look terrible I don't want to go like face real people looking like this I want to be at like full stars the curvy road east is overgrown I see trots when it has a chance but more often it walks forced to jump over larger branches blocking the path the nearby lake is surrounded by thirsty wildlife I observe the dark forest ready to react if something jumps at me I see's not gonna die we'll protect the horse with our life a couple of stone slabs were turned into a hut-like shape, one of the ancient chapels raised by the priests of the United Church in the days of few soldiers and even fewer shelters. The dolmens proved to be especially durable, though the conditions they offered were harsh. The entrance is barely wide enough to let you walk inside. It was meant to keep larger beasts away, including your palfrey. You can't spend the night here. You dismount and look around. There's an hourglass carved in the stone, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I feel live. Total Chad. All right, let's see. Do we want to go? We can go in a chapel, or we can look at this hourglass that's apparently carved into the stone. Oh, I guess is that what this is? Let's look at the hourglass. It's the most common religious sign of the city folk, adapted by the United Church, Orders of Truth, and the majority of fellowships. It's used in temples and during the funeral rites, but also to decorate codices or jewelry. The winged hourglasses portray the ephemerality of life and the rigidity of time. When possible, they're made of steel, signifying the strength of humankind's determination and innovation. Uh, let's see, so I can either bow, but it's a sign trying to protect an obsolete building. I don't know enough about the lore to make a informed decision here, which I guess is, I think, the point of this game. So it's used in temples during feudal rites. Strength of human. Ah, uh, I say we bow at it. That seems good. You stay in front of the symbol, lowering your head and gathering your thoughts. You try to imagine the struggles of the valiant builders who put their time, sweat, and blood into gathering, shaping, and transporting these huge rocks. They were led by a vision, one that requires artistry, planning, and a sense of shared purpose. They did it for the sake of future generations, and even if their names are forgotten, they've saved many lives. The orders teach to be thankful of such sacrifices. In your silent prayer, nature seems both distant and complementary. It doesn't shape itself around your thoughts, but you feel like nothing is going to hurt you, not while you're here. For a while, you balance between chaos and order. So be it, you say at the end of your prayer, as the tradition has taught you. The birds are singing delightfully. But now I step away after my prayer. Icy is playfully poking the nearby bushes with his nose, ready for the further journey. <laughs> I enter the chapel. The beams of light get through the gaps between the rocks, but you can hardly see anything. A torch would fill the place with smoke, but a candle will suffice. I wonder how many travelers have sat on the cold rock, observing the entrance and fighting with their heavy eyelids. Uh, we'll look around. 
Ooh, okay, so we actually have to... This is where it starts. I know part of the game you have to actually type your responses in, like in an old adventure game. Um, so we have to actually name on uh, uh, like stuff we're interested in. If anyone has any ideas, let me know in chat. But I'm going to go ahead and start thinking of things we could investigate. Um, I don't know if we type just one thing or like a sentence. Let's try floor. Like we'll look around the floor. Even though a part of the ground is covered in a single massive slab, there are parts free of any flooring. You see soil, small rocks, and sand. In one spot, you find the remnants of charred wood. Holes. Okay, let's look for holes. You try and make a hole somewhere in the ground, but with no luck. Uh, holes has been rejected. Um, you said there was ashes, right? Let's look for, like, a f fireplace? Uh... Walls. They are all around you. <laughs> um, let's look for maybe just fire. A part of the floor is littered with the remnants of an old campfire. Not more than a couple of months old. You see dust, burnt bones, and wood. The wall above this spot is covered with soot. Um, can I look like at the soot? You notice sticky soot on the walls. Oh, it adds it to the picture. Look at this. That's cute. You notice sticky soot on the walls. Part of it covers black marks and pictures, possibly letters. Okay, okay. Um, Letters? A large part of the wall is covered in engravings. It's difficult to figure out what they are meant to portray, but one picture is obvious to you. A long arrow pointing down. Part of the writing, as well as the nearby wall, is covered with soot. Ooh, um, engravings. Long arrow pointing down. I don't know what that would mean. Um, can we just, like, look at the arrow? Like, see what it's pointing to? No, that gives us the... Can I just look down, maybe? Explore the exit! Jesus. You stomp in a couple of spots and don't hear any direct response. If there's something below this chapel, it must be under a thick layer of soil and rocks. There a bed in here. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can investigate in here. So it was writings. I know they said there were like pictures too. I wonder. Uh, no, that might be it. Okay, I think that might be everything we can find in here. I see is leaning against the wall, napping. All right, uh, so we'll keep heading this away. I really like this game so far, though. It has a really interesting composition, and I'm I'm loving the art on the side. Ooh, music change. The neglected path barely finds any space among all the hills, trees, and streams. There's a deer on the ground, lying in a red puddle, surrounded by a small pack of creatures, which notice your presence quickly. There's about eight of them, with thick fur and shades of brown, gray, and black. The hairless faces with small eyes and large mouths, currently stained by the blood of their prey. Some of them move on all fours, while others comfortably stand on two feet. They are two or three heads shorter than you, but it's your mount which truly towers over them, and you see how a couple of the beasts take a few steps back, grunting and glancing at one another. The one with gray fur shouts, and the others move towards the rocks and sticks piled on the road. They hold them awkwardly, and some struggle to maintain a straight posture, leaning on their new weapons for support. Then almost all of them spread to your right and left, blending with the shrubs loudly. Only two of the apes are standing still. Ooh, okay. Do we fight or flee? We're at half a- I don't know how much we would take from, like, a hit. I'm assuming one, because we only have, like, four health max. Um. Uh, let's, you know what, violence is the answer. And I do have advantage in, in fighting. I grab my axe. Icy tries to turn her coward, Icy. No! <laughs> We're gonna fight! Uh, 
Icy tries to turn around, but only loyally follows your directions. Okay, so we can charge at the goblins. I can scream. <laughs> um, I can look behind me. This is really a lot of options, which is very pleasing. I can dismount. Ooh, this is a lot of options. Gotta scream? Um, okay, and it's a dice option, which we haven't done yet. Alright, I scream at the pack, shaking my weapon. I try to scare them away. You do your best, raising your voice in a fierce shout and showing that you're ready to take them down. The gray goblin seems unmoved, showing you its long tusks and swinging its arms, and its younger companion looks around, grunting. It stays in place. The gray one focuses its attention on you, or ra <laughs> rather something just behind you. Then you get stabbed in the back, literally. You turn around and seeing a goblin that, as far as you can tell, was not a part of the group surrounding the carcass. It's holding a wooden spear, or rather a pointed stick, longer than the creature is tall. Your armor was able to reduce the impact, but you feel the pain from the hit and you can tell that the linen was torn. You'll need to find someone able to fix it. I can't, I can't win and can't run away. I have to rush forward. Well, okay, so I'm assuming that's a failed uh, roll. Your mount speeds up, though it doesn't have enough space to enter a gallop. You prepare your weapon, but while many of well, while you have hundreds of hours of training behind you, hardly any of them happen in the saddle, and you do your best to focus. The younger goblin attempts to stop your horse, but the strike it receives sends it into a nearby bush, screaming in pain. The gray one, however, manages to grab your boot and is now trying to keep up with your speed, making one long leap after another. The first strong swing of your axe isn't able to reach the target. A spear would be better in this scenario. Okay, are we gonna aim for his head, kick him, or ride faster? I feel like riding a horse... I feel like I should just kick it off, right? Like, that's the easiest thing, with, like, with no reach. Let's kick it. Oh, <laughs> I'm doing so bad. <laughs> Sorry, I see I'd already picked it. You swing your foot around, or at least you try, overwhelmed by the weight and muscle of the beast. Before you manage to land a hit, your leg is already in great pain. The beast, however, gets scared. It lets go of your boot and leaps away, landing on the two hind limbs. It shouts after you, but stops its pursuit. Though it hurts, your leg is free and the road is clear. And fuck it, we ball. For a few more moments, you hear the angry shouts and screeches, but soon after, it's again only you and your mount. Uh, do I have, like, anything in my inventory... We have no rations. Um, oh, our horse is like in our equipment. That's fun. A rope. It's in the travel. Yeah, I was right. We have three. Um, rainproof cloak. Um, okay, so I can't use that. Oh, there's a character sheet. Okay, well, uh, I don't think I can heal. So time to see what we're going to find down the road. Ooh, looks like a broken cart, maybe? Fallen tree. A round pine tree blocks the road. For a wayfarer, walking over the thin branches at the top is not much of an issue. Even Icy, led on a rope, could walk around the stump, but a large wagon couldn't move onward in one piece, at least not without detaching the mules, unpacking all the wares, and moving everything by hand. Cutting a tree into pieces would take hours, even with proper tools, and you can't hope to move on with just move it with just the muscles you and your mount have to offer. Uh I can't choose those. Okay, should we wash in the river and make ourselves pretty, or should we investigate the area? I feel I just got ambushed, like I feel like we should look around probably. Man, I'm, like, demolishing this water bottle. Alright, uh, we're gonna look around. Uh, let's look at the tree. 
The leaves are not completely dry, and when you break one of the twigs, it still contains water, so it just fell. There are no signs of sickness that you can recognize, and the termites and other bugs are still sparse. Beneath the trunk, there's no blood or abandoned limbs. Uh, we'll check the area. You walk deeper into the wilderness, searching through the shrubs and trees. You don't find any side paths nor remains of a camp or hamlet. The first game trail you find has been used exclusively by animals. Wouldn't trust the water. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Um, let's look at the stump. I want to see if this, like, fell naturally or, like, something got it. You don't find any marks of a maw or paws. The top is hip-high and unnaturally smooth. You could comfortably sit down on it. That's interesting. So this is just, this has been cut down by something. Uh, oh, I can guess what happened here. Um, let's look in the bushes. Oh, I found an arrow. There are no berries left, only broken twigs, fallen leaves, and trampled grass. You notice a pointy arrow made by a human hand, with a head made of horn and black-orange fletching. You don't know what type of bird would have such feathers. You see no arrow marks around, not even on the wagon. Uh, let's look at the wagon, actually, speaking of it. The planks are still firm, and there's no mustiness in the air, but the vehicle needs a push. Needs just a push to fall to pieces, like a child's toy with nothing to keep the parts together. There are ways to construct a wagon with just wood, leather, and fiber, but you find the marks of hinges, braces, nails, and clamps, which are now all gone. The wheels are missing their steel rims. You find only one linen bag, empty and moist. You can't estimate how deep the tracks are. The ground was hard, so the cart's weight wasn't a significant factor. Okay, so all their metal is missing, which is interesting. I'm trying to think if I know any creatures that would, like, s steal metal besides humans. An error. Uh, look at the road. The road here is already being overgrown and fading away, but it's in no worse shape than the other parts of the southern, southeastern route. No alternative path is formed around the blockade. Look at the hill. The rocky wall isn't much of a challenge. The top of the tree is covered with short grass and sparse trees. You notice a couple of bushes and a good view of the road, just next to the remains of a campfire. Charred pieces of wood, ash, bird bones, trampled grass, and broken earthenware bottle. You follow the deepest tracks, leading to the edge of the soft earth. Someone jumped down, or at least stopped stepping on the grass. Tinka you think Tinkaton did this? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. They do take, you know, take metal. Tinkaton's in the game, confirmed. Uh, we'll investigate the river. It would only take two steps to disappear into the deep water. The rocky bank smells fresh and is filled with the sounds of frogs. Here's the frogs. I only play games with frogs in them. Insects and birds. It's not a good spot to squ quench your thirst. The beds of long kelp, pulled by the flow of the river, are crowded with fish and four-legged creatures that you don't even recognize. You keep an eye on the land. There's no carcass in sight and no signs of shells that would be left nearby the tracks. In the trampled grass you find two sets of tracks to follow. There are no hoof prints. The first set is near the destroyed wagon. The wayfarer is suddenly stopped. You can see where they made a sharp turn. The second trail is close to the tree stump. Most of the marks were left by flat, cheap boots not suitable for long walks, but someone was wearing hard, wide heels deserting the ground. Both trails avoid the eastern wilderness. They stick to the main road and lead you north. They could have belonged to two dozen people, maybe more. You follow them for a bit, but lose them once there's no more mud and tree needles to find. Ah, uh, do we think we know what happened? Well, yeah, we do. Tinkaton came. Um. Okay, most of these we can eliminate. Not dying from illness. Not broken by wind. I think it was cut down to set up an ambush, probably, because... Laid across the road, it's a clean cut, and there's clearly a camp, like, up on the... I don't know which bank it is, but, like, up here, probably. Why was the wagon abandoned? Let's see. I don't... Is Tinkaton more of a monster or a highwayman? Monster. Like, it is more of a monster, but, like, I, I think in the game, I think it was attacked by highwaymen. 
Although I don't know why they would take just all the metal. Maybe it's like really expensive in this, um, like they are in the wilderness. Metal would be really useful. Uh, impossible to tell. I, I th I'm going to guess attacked by high women because I don't think it broke. I don't think it was just left behind because it's been stripped. Well, maybe they didn't have time to move it, but why would they disassemble if they didn't? Have yeah, we're going to go with high women. Let's see, what was originally transported on the wagon? So it's people wearing cheap shoes. Or at least shoes not meant to tr travel. So. Probably passengers since there are so many. What happened to the owners? Taken north. You think that the tree was cut down to set up an ambush. The cart which transported human passengers was attacked by highwaymen and its owners were taken north. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I don't like how many times it's like asking me if I'm sure. Well, you can't be sure of what really happened here. You don't think there's much left for you to find. Let's hope you haven't missed anything. I, I mean, I, I think that's it. And we don't trust the river, so let's travel north. As long as you ride uphill, the forest is sparse. Soon after, the tree roots tear the path apart. The road is coated with branches, acorns, leaves, and chestnuts, and some seedlings that have already broken through the pitted surface of the road. If left undisturbed for another year or two, the forest will reclaim this place. Finally, you ride upwards again. The plants are getting smaller and the road more rocky. I sigh with relief. Huh. <laughs> Ooh, a tower. Love that. While the hills are full of life, you don't hear anything coming from the watchtower. Its upper level lacks a wooden platform from which the guards could fire their crossbows or drop stones on the opponents below, so this place was not meant to be used in combat, but rather as a shelter from claws and fangs. Such structures can be found in especially untamed parts of the dragon woods, used occasionally by travelers or patrolling squads. Since the end of the war, the cities can't find enough people and dragon bones to keep them in good shape. You see no footsteps, no lights, no fresh trash or latrine. The birds are printing their feathers on the top of the tower where the branches of nearby trees are swaying in the fierce, cold wind. Fun fact, Spiny, you forgot to add me on Discord, bucko. Yeah, bucko, better add him on Discord. <laughs> Let's see, so we can look for tracks. Yeah, we'll see if the people made it here. The tracks lead here, through the narrow gate and west. The hard heels are especially noticeable. Um, let's look at the signpost. The planks and letters are damaged by decades of rain, frost, borers, and claws. You scratch off some of the moss, and there are three planks in the signpost, each one pointing to a different direction. The letters don't tell you anything. The plank on the top points north and south, though there are no pictures that would tell you anything more. The one beneath it points east, and there's a word written in blue paint. The arrow here looks like a magic wand. The bottom plank has a picture of a tall tower surrounded by little houses and points west. The wood is covered in red paint, suggesting danger. I wonder if that's the necromancer place from earlier. Um, I can just see if there's anything interesting in the trees. Yeah, we're going to do that. It must be a human-made copse. Only the smallest of the spruces are out of order, born of wild seeds. The largest trees are as tall as the tower itself, which surely doesn't help those who are meant to observe their surroundings. There are also some stumps, most of which used to belong to young saplings. These trees are likely meant to be sold to carpenters and coopers, but they are left alone many years ago. In the copse you find wild fennel and lettuce thriving in shadows, and there are pears and berries growing along nearby trees and shrubs. Can I take that? Oh, they're not ripe. Okay. So I can come back. I found, like, a couple of places, like, where I could maybe come back and get food later, which is important because I'm, like, out of food. <laughs> Let's see. Look at the campfire. You see a shattered bowl, the remains of a meal from many years ago. However, the firewood and the lonely stool are not too old. You don't doubt that the watchtower seems less threatening to wayfarers than the wilderness around it, even when it's locked. Let's walk to the gate. Setting up a firm wall in a place like this is a bit unusual. It goes on from no more than forty feet until it connects with a natural rock face. 
Such a structure would be found near the city, acting as a checkpoint at which to stop travelers to search through belongings or request a fee. But in the middle of nowhere, deer and other animals, used to running with no hindrance, must have been more than annoyed, a risky investment. You touch the gate made of high-quality wood, previously soaked in oil, but now mostly wiped off. It was left open, and you don't see any wooden bar that could be used to lock it. You try to move the cold planks, buried in dried-out mud, but with no luck. It would require some weary digging. Yeah, approach the entrance. You take a look at Icy. If necessary, it, uh, he could bow his head and walk inside. This place should be a decent shelter for the both of you. The planks are strong, heavy, and well protected from rain and wind. When you knock, they seem to be thick. While the door shakes at your push, it won't open. Defensive structures usually have a locking bar on the inner side, but you also see a large keyhole. You walk around the tower, making sure there are no open windows or other entrances. It doesn't look like you can get in without destroying the door, and doing so is going to make a potential entryway for wild creatures. Uh, yeah, we're gonna look through the keyhole. You kneel down and take a peek. There's nothing in the hole, but the room is dark, with a tiny bit of light passing through the crevices of the windows. You see the shapes of wooden furniture, like tables, casks, and a ladder, but the only movement you notice belongs to the dust dancing in sunbeams. Uh, crossroads. Can I not, like, do anything else, I guess? Uh, I can't destroy the door, because I'm at low health. Um... Yeah, there's not, like, a ton I can... Can I use this? I mean, I have a travel set, but I don't think I can use it for anything. I don't know if I can... Wait, inventory character. I wish I could, like, hunt, because I think I could make food at that fire. I'm, like, very low on supplies. Um. I guess we could go... Let's see. So this, uh... I think west was the, like, danger village. I'll have to look at the signpost again. Uh, let's see. North and south. So east is the... Is a magic wand... And the west was the dangerous village. So I say we I say we go east to like wherever the magic is, because I don't think at one HP I can really take on anything dangerous. Um I think this is just a continuation. We'll see if there's like stuff over here for us to do. The first part of the trail is narrow and overgrown. The steep crag of the south divides the lush forest in half. You barely recognize any shapes in the entanglement of greys, browns, and greens. The northern landscape, while similarly impenetrable, is the exact opposite. The meadow turns into barren hills and mountains, barely covered by grass and bushes. Maybe the riding ibexes of the clanspeople from the growing mountains would get through such a barrier. But there are no clans here. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty. I can, like, make the map bigger. The road leads you downhill to the edge of a lake. The clearing around the dwelling is quiet, with no crickets, flies, or even toads. The grass is not even knee-high. There are no signs of a wharf or boats. The wall wasn't coated and has already been bitten by winds and rain. Let's see if we can get inside. Right next to the gate, a gargoyle or a stone look-alike, kneels on a slab. It's dark purple, almost black, with yellow, pointy teeth. Though its half-open mouth has no tongue, and the creature doesn't move even an inch, the eyes have been replaced by crystals, red like currant juice. Uh, ooh, we can touch the gargoyle. Um, I don't know if I trust touching it, because I guess magic. Let's knock on the gate. That seems polite. Finding no knocker, you use your fist. There's no response. I'll yell. Your voice is welcomed by the screeching of dozens of avian throats. They take off from behind the wall, heading towards the lake. After a few breaths, the eyes of the gargoyle grow brighter. What's with all the ape shouts? 
You lost? The words are coming from the monster's mouth, though it remains still. Stand in front of me. I want to see a mug. The drawling voice belongs to a woman, but is lined with unnatural creaking. The eyes don't rotate nor blink. So, what are ye? Friendly, playful, distance, intimidating, vulnerable. Hello, gentle aunt. All right, so we are a road warden. Um, a new road warden. This is our first day on the job. Um, we've been appointed to both uh, explore and protect the roads of the peninsula, which we're exploring now, and have been hired secondarily to basically invest the area to see if it would like be good to, to cultivate and turn into like trade. Um, we followed a signpost here that had a magic wand drawn on it, and this gargoyle just asked us uh, what we are. It's been very cool. The music has been really nice, and the art has been really cute so far. Um, we're low on health, we're low on nourishment, we're okay on armor, and we're doing really bad on looking pretty. Um, we really need to, like, wa wash up. <laughs> Okay, guys, are we going to be friendly, playful, distanced, intimidating, or vulnerable? I say we just be friendly. Like, we really need some, like, resources. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to be friendly. Yeah, this is the status. Actually, there's actually five. So this has four, four, four. This one has five. <laughs> We slept on the ground. We had two to start, but we slept on the ground. It went down to one. I'm Thaumaturgy, the new road warden. I hope you're having a great day. During the long pause, the glow of the gargoyle's eyes subside. Once they light up again, the voice isn't much softer. Well, good to see a new warden. Ye came to pick up some stuff? You're many days too early. Or do you even know who I am? Uh, should we be... Honest, probably. I feel like this lady is like definitely wizard. I feel like she could her I feel like she could tell for lying. We'll tell her we're new. So you lost your way and now you're wasting my time. Long pause. I'm Eudocia, the only enchantress you'll find in this land, and you're disturbing my work. I don't see people in the middle of the day. Return in the early morning or a few hours out before dusk, if you have to. Best yet, don't bother me at all. The monster's eyes darken again. Your mount is ready to ride away. Uh, sh okay, so should we wait? Yeah, I agree. Honesty is the best policy. Should we wait for, I think, dusk? Let's see, she said a couple hours before dusk. So it's ten hours till dusk. Um... Should we wait for her, or should we try to force our way in, or should we just leave? I feel like we should wait. Because, like, if she fights us, like, we're very low on health. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna wait. Yeah, we rushed um, a group of goblins earlier and they uh, mauled the shit out of my leg, which is why we're on only one, one HP. It's getting colder, but finally the monster's eyes glow red. Go inside. I'll soon. I'll be with you soon. The monster's eyes darken again. Soon after, you hear heavy steps and the earth shakes. Something lifts the beam blocking the gate and you realize that your hand is already on the haft of your axe. Uh... Yeah, it's good that I have quick reflexes. The gate opens violently and rebounds with a loud thud, almost closing again. The creature in front of you is made of floating rocks that appear to be connected, but it's just an illusion. They could twist and bend in every direction. The eyeless sentinel faces you blankly. You've seen other golems in Havlavan, endlessly helping with bothersome tasks, but you've no idea what makes them move. It lowers its slab-like hands and steps aside, making way for you. Its head rotates, following your steps, but other than that, it's motionless as a statue. Yeah, we enter the yard. The house in front of you has a huge entrance, just large enough for a golem. 
The building is whitewashed, but the lime is aged and damaged. The tools are spread around in no particular order. The rocks resting on the top of the shed resemble the golems. The garden patches covered with herbs and vegetables are neglected. It's quiet here. Okay, we talked to the call. Oh, he's cute. Let me look at the whole camp. Uh, we'll, we'll go talk to the golem first. It seems dead, inactive, as city folk would call it. But the pneuma still makes its chunks float less than an inch away from one another. It doesn't react to your presence. Unlike the previous golem, this one bears engraved signs on its larger rocks. Their meaning is unclear to you. You can't tell if they're decoration or carriers of a spell. A leaf of the door is open. I step closer. The woman is tall and stands upright, with her arms crossed and legs apart. She's more than thirty, with a face touched by lack of sleep. She gives you a long look, observing your blade, hands, boots, and forehead, everything but your eyes. Oh, I see. Have a good night. Thank you. I really appreciate you stopping by. I'll see you next time. I greet ye. Without the distortion caused by the gargoyle her, s gargoyle, her strong voice isn't as disquieting. No surprise that it caught ya eye, but don't disturb it. It's very much awoken and will defend itself. Or me, if it comes to it. I give her a better look. She's wearing a long, ragged robe, covered in stains. It used to be blue, but is now unevenly pale. She's barefoot, with skin covered with dust and dirt. Her dark hair was recently washed, but it's untidily spread on her shoulders, back, and chest. She wears no jewelry, belts, or buckles. Are you friendly, playful, distanced, intimidating, or vulnerable? Uh, I feel like vulnerable and intimidating are bad here. Uh, we'll just continue to be friendly. I feel like that's good. I'm glad. I also like that it shows like what the option is before you do it. I haven't seen very many games that actually like show you what you're going to choose. Because <laughs> you'll be like, oh, I pick the witty option, and then they say like some just real off the wall shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, we'll be friendly though. I'm glad you have a moment to spare. I won't bother you for long. Yeah, not rolling the dice on, on dialogue is nice. Although some of the actions, like in battle, you can choose to do like a sure action or you can choose to like do a risky action and they roll a dice. Which is kind of cool. She looks at the ground and drawls out her words. I sure hope not. I'm not interested in chatter. If you need to bother me, speak in the tongue of dragons and barter. I don't serve stew. I don't offer baths. If ye come here, I better get aught from it. She walks past you and cocks her head towards the golem who lets you in. It turns around and shuts the gate. Good that ye came at such an hour. Keep it up in the future. If ye ever come here in the middle of the day, ye'll stand outside, looking at the doors like an ibex. We don't need more salutations, so, her voice remains cold, why are ye here? Okay, so she can enchant an item, give me a job, um... Newcomers from the beginning of uh, stream, Asterion is the previous road warden. Uh, he mysteriously disappeared and we're investigating like his disappearance um, so we can like bring word to his family. Um, she, I think, asked if I was Asterion when I came. We'll, uh, we'll see if she knows anything about him. Nah, he's not here. Not even a mouse in my shed. She meets your eyes, yet her gray irises remain absent. Her sigh turns to a snort. Odd else? Uh, do you have anything to sell? I can show her. I found an arrow with mysterious feathers in the bushes by the road. Um, she didn't trust me enough to speak about Asterion. Um, I can show her the arrow. Why? Are you tracing a murderer? She smirks, but then grabs the arrow and takes a quick look. Black and orange. I don't know much about wood, but I recognize these feathers. The people of Gale Rocks breed such pheasants. 
She gives it back. It's in the far north, close to the coast. Um, do I have... So we have a pouch with coins. Five coins. Let's see if she can sell anything. New trader unlocked. <laughs> well, I'm not a trader. I do the stuff people ask me about, and they're not for sale. She glances at the house, and then towards the pocket at her hips. There's but one tool I'm willing to part with for ten bones, but it's for spellcasters only. She reaches out to you. On her open palm you see a flat, small pebble, bluish, but in no way unusual. You put it in your mouth and press it to your palate. No chewing. She smirks. If you're a sorcerer, it'll restore your pneuma. Uh, well, I can't afford it. So we'll just say, we'll think about it. Just like in a real shop. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for a job. She stands still for a moment, then cocks her head to the side. I've got some stuff that could use another hand. You up for some danger if it comes to it. You nod and ask what sort of creature is bothering her. Nah, I meant riding and climbing. If you can do it without grabbing that axe of yours, fine. Now give me a moment. She opens one of the heavy doors to her house, and you catch a glimpse of a messy bed and a floor covered with clothes. She's really relatable. After a minute, she shows up with a large sack filled with rods made of smooth, clean bronze. Here's the gist of it. I need you to get eight spots across the peninsula. High trees, mountain sides. I don't really travel much. She lets out a confident chuckle. So I can't hold your hand. I need one of them in the white marshes and the wetlands far west of here. Other than that, you keep your eyes open. Most relatable character, yeah. She takes one of the rods. Once you reach a good spot, place one of these as high as you can. I'll pay you in dragons, two for each one, but place them at least four before you come to see me. I need as many of them out as possible. Uh, what are they for? Well, there's magic in them, as you can imagine. You weigh a long rod in your hand. Even though it's more than two feet long, it's light and empty inside. You could bend it on your knee. The bag also contains one long hemp cord and a scrap of cloth. If I were to send my golems away, let's say a mile or two from here, they'd stop moving at all. Oh, she wants a relay network. Waiting for me to show up. She approaches the nearest sentinel and touches its chest. They carry similar rods inside, so the plan is to give my orders better range, so to speak. I'm tired of depending on hirelings, especially since they no longer stop by. Man, she's setting up a mesh network. <laughs> she leans against the golem with her arms crossed. Questions? Um. How much time do I have? I'm already on like a 40 day limit for the game, so I don't really care about that. I don't care if the locals aren't happy. <laughs> Uh, I don't care if she raids the villages. We have a deal. <laughs> she avoids your eyes. Great, just don't die on the road. This bronze cost me many favors. And be sure to leave one of the rods in white marshes. Alright, I can't trade because she's too expensive. Um, what's your story? Can I sleep here? Uh, actually, let's ask her about the peninsula. I'm not selling gossip, nor am I buying it. I have my hut, my guards, and my lake. I'm an artisan, not an innkeep. If you need one, ride south to Pelt of the North. The keeper is stiff like a broom, but offers a nice room. Her voice is dripping with annoyance. Or if you'd rather visit a cheerful place, ride north to Foggy Lake. Or is it Foggy's Lake? Whatever. Foggy's the keeper. At least she's not as boring as the other guy. Okay, so we can. Looks like we can just go north or south for rest. Uh, she seems like annoyed to talk with me, so. Yeah, we'll just leave. <laughs> because we'll come back here anyway. So, let's see. 
spirit by world peace. Okay, so I can't go directly from here, so we should just keep heading north this way. Uh, how long am I planning on streaming? Uh, I'm not sure. I've been going, uh, I think about an hour. I can't see the, the timer in my current setup. Uh, probably at least another hour though, I'm not sure. If my voice starts getting tired, uh, I might be a little bit shorter. Uh, and if my voice keeps up, I might stream a little longer. But we are gonna head north. Oh, that's a cool bridge. With no trees or crags blocking the sun, the road is bright and inviting. The simple bridge is centuries old, bitten by time. It makes you think of the dolmen you saw south of here. The torrent here is deep and fast, with plenty of fish. The boat is destroyed beyond repair, rotten, falling to pieces, with holes in the floor and on the sides, overgrown with fungi and moss. The thick shrubs lining the path are covered with thorns. Small birds are jumping from one twig to another, pecking at the brown berries. You think about picking some of the fruits, but you're not sure they're edible. Uh, let's look at the fish. You see dozens of red and gray shells. As you walk by, they stray, they stay close, following your steps. We Okay, so we passed a river earlier, and I wanted to bathe in it because I'm really grody. Uh... I feel like that- I don't know if the shells would attack me though. The other one like had a lot more stuff in it. Let's see. Two hours before dusk. I could probably waste an hour here. Let's see if there's anything here. After what feels like an eternity of searching, searching around the boat, the banks, and the shrubs, you sit down on the bridge to take a break and realize you haven't actually looked beneath it. You kneel on the grass and look into the darkness. Among the cobwebs and bugs, you spot an old, pe old piece of fabric pinned under a rock. You pull it out and find a rotting, torn pouch that contains a single dragon bone. You make sure you haven't missed the other ones in the dirt. If they ever existed, they've rolled down and sunk for good. Cool, we got a coin. Icy looks around nervously and approaches you when it, uh, when it notices your attention. Yeah, no point in staying here. We ball. Getting late. Safe place to sleep. Okay, I think... The gentle road leads downhill, getting greener and less rocky the farther north. You get... Okay, it's getting late. Just in case, your eyes run towards a few drier parts of the meadow, and you instantly shout at Icy to make haste. A pack of short-haired wolves, at least twenty members strong, is chasing after you. Their coats are a mixture of yellow, black, and white spots, as if someone threw mud and paint at them. They move towards the road with human-like speed, and you realize only some of them are running straight at you. They're trying to cut through my path. If it wasn't for your palfrey, the beasts would have already caught up with you. Their trap was perfectly set up, not leaving you any path of escape. Your terrified mount is disciplined enough to stay on the beaten path, and even though one of the big-eared wolves almost sinks its teeth into your mount's thigh, you manage to squeeze between the hunters. For the next few minutes you do your best to get further away, and while your gallop is indeed faster, the wolves are easily shorten the distance by moving through the sparse forest. You ride past a wooden cabin placed in a clearing at the bottom of the rock face, but you can't stop while the pack is at your back. Do I have anything I could use here? Um, you think about your sacks and bundles, but the pack won't wait for you to sort things out. The group gets larger the farther you go, as even more of its members, previously hidden among the trees and grasses, now join the hunt, allowing their tired family members to slow down. You may be able to lose them after some time, but scaring or wounding may force them to give up on their prey sooner. Uh, yeah, my crossbow is ready. I've got two corals left. Okay. You reach for the drawn crossbow and a bolt and lock your sights on the closest creature. You wait until you learn its rhythm and shoot when it's in midair. The arrow flies through the wolf's flesh, causing it to let out a pained cry and plunge to the ground. Its concerned allies howl with fear and anger. While a few of them try to keep up, many more stay behind and surround their pack member, protecting it from potential threats. After another few minutes, you are alone again, this time at the edge of the hills. 
I see us tired but patient, more happy to survive than angry at your wanderlust. At least you can hope the pack will move to a different place during the night. Okay, I can't really look for a place to sleep. <laughs> the valley is flanked by the hills. To the west, the grasses and bushes blend to the horizon and turn to another part of the forest. The southern hills are gray and tall, with fortress-like rock faces and a crown of conifers. The northern ones have countless sand-colored rocks, lumped together like, rubble, like piles of rubble and clay, bearing hardly any soil or weeds. The plants here are struggling. The grass is short and yellowish, sometimes dried out. The bushes have silver leaves, like many plants from sunny areas. The mushrooms can't hide in the shadows, but as you approach one, you see it's growing from the remains of a dead bird, while others are covering old branches and other plants. They won't ma last much longer. It will be easy to spot any larger beasts around. You have to squint to find the first threatening creature. A runner is in the far east, close to the hills, though it completely ignores you, walking around and observing the grass, looking for its next prey. You don't have to worry about it for now. There are boot prints in the ground as well as in the short grass, fresher than in any of the eastern road. Since many mushrooms were cut away with a knife, you notice few berries on the shrubs, you conclude it's a foraging spot for the people from the north, though there doesn't seem to be much food left. There are almost no prints leading further south. Yeah, I am looking for a safe place to sleep. Let's forage. I got two wild plants. You let Icy keep itself busy while you walk around, looking for anything edible. It takes a fair amount of time, you don't plan to carry around raw mushrooms and bugs, and the wild vegetables need to be washed before you put them into your bags. You finally find a few handfuls of plants, fruits, and nuts. Next time, however, it's not going to be so easy, especially since the runner, a bird both taller and wider than you, observes you carefully, at first from a distance and then circling around. After about half an hour, you hear its piercing screech. As the creature runs at you, shaking a beak larger than your head, you throw everything into a sack and get into the saddle. Let's go up here. <laughs> Oop, I accidentally stayed up all night. Oh well. The air is humid but fresh, vitalizing. The light touches the road and shrubs, blocked only by a single willow, wild and untrimmed. You're by a lake, too large for you to see its other bank, but the local soil isn't too fertile. There are only a few trees on the horizon, while the struggling bushes and grasses fight with layers of rocks. The path leading farther north is green, bright, and calming. A gray rabbit is cleaning its fur near the brook, but the sound of hooves makes it mop towards the nearest shrub. Hop. Right after it sinks into the leaves, you hear it squeal, caught off quickly. Whatever its hunter was, it leaves behind only the rustling of the thicket and a trail of blood. You wait for a long minute with a hand on your axe, but the creature doesn't return. You relax a bit and turn towards the stone statue of a young woman. Such a monument would be a better fit for a temple or a rich city folk's house. Here, without any cover, it's already losing its shape from the rains and dust. Chunks of the face and hair have already broken off. It has detailed eyes and human-like proportions, and the clothes are fabric petrified by a spell. The statue carries the usual traveling equipment, a walking staff, gamison, simple pants now covered by leaves. Uh, I feel like I wouldn't vandalize offering, because it's a shame to see it deteriorating. You observe its delicate face and broken fingers, the last bits of which still hold the staff. You wonder why someone would place such a thing here. It may be a statue of a long-gone hero, made in the likeness. Uh, I think it marks a place of great importance. There are no answers to find in the statue's absent eyes. Let's get rid of the branches. We'll make it pretty. Um... Yeah, I want to make it clear there's a new road warden around, someone who cares. You dismount and approach the bushes. You try to push them away, but their stems are thick and healthy, crowded with insects and spider webs. Thankfully, you see no thorns, and the touch of a leaf doesn't make your finger itchy. Let's 
cut it down with the axe. You tether Icy to the tree, letting it choose between drinking, grazing, and napping. You prepare your equipment, keeping an eye on the bush where you saw the rabbit's last moments. You use your weight to move the plants to one side and cut right above the ground. The stems are healthy and flexible, so getting through them is rough, but you have enough strength to deal with them in a couple of minutes and throw them into the lake. The work goes on for a bit, but once you're done, the statue stands in all its former glory. I also like, as you like do things, the map actually like changes. Like, we were investigating, like, a little temple earlier, and, like, we found some wall carvings, and, like, they actually showed up in the picture, which is kind of cool. A couple of old offerings are still on the pedestal, polished rocks, bone figurines, and moldy bowls and plates that were used to store food. In one vessel you see a dragon bone. It's dark and could be older than a generation, but it would surely be accepted by any merchant. Um, yeah, she can have it. I mean, I cleaned off her thing. Uh, let's wash in the stream. I feel like this is fine. The brook would hardly cover your feet, but you could sit on the pebbles and splash yourself with water. Yeah, I washed my hands, face, and neck. Yeah, we got one pretty point. As you wash your sweaty skin, Icy quenches his thirst and looks for intruders. We can't seek shelter. Let's, um... Wow, yeah, there's, like, nothing. <laughs> nothing I can do. Um, let's see... eat some plants. That'll kill me if I travel. Um, I don't think I have another option, honestly. Like the map doesn't let me Yeah, let's try traveling. Oh, it just lets me go there. The pyre is no more, and the stench barely lingers. The soldiers are preparing bowls of gruel. Tulia welcomes you with a nod. Still alive, I see. Okay, so I can go to... Oh, it's verge of death. I have more questions. Thanks. Okay, I can't wash there. Uh, squad's mission. You know, the usual, making the road safe, keeping people alive. I can't really tell you. You sense no hesitation. Do you have any other questions? Ah, it's just sleep. Can I... Let's eat this really quick. Let's see if this kills me. I don't know if this will or not. I don't have any other options though. Like most people, you wake in the middle of almost every night. Before your second sleep comes, you spend an hour or two taking care of your belongings, shell, and soul. Some people spend this time with their friends, families, or lovers, but your routine is different. If you don't have to take care of essential tasks... Ooh, okay. So, I stretch my muscles, work out a bit, spend time outside observing the stars, check on my horse, pray and think about dreams, stay where I am, trying to ease my soul and focus on my breathing. I feel anxious during this time. thinking about dreams like that's nice I 
Your back begs you to stand up. A green field mouse is foraging in the grass, unaware that you've noticed it. You prepare Icy for the journey ahead. Can I? Yeah, I can do that. Cool, I get one appearance. Oh, it didn't even work. I'm like a negative one, I guess. Okay. Okay, where should we head to next? Let's try going this way this time. Icy trots with ease, unbothered by the few branches covering the beaten road. The bird song and distant howls draws your attention to the forest which gets sparser and brighter. You spot boars, roe deer, and saurians. The sight of the nearby wolf pack worries you, but once you push your hips forward and your palfrey enters a canter, the beasts don't even begin a pursuit. The speed alone will protect you from many dangers. You notice a stone tower taller than the trees. It must be the inn. I really need, like... Yeah, yeah, this place will heal me up. Inns like this one fit the regions traveled by merchants, but you wouldn't expect a place of this side, size in a forsaken peninsula. The stone and lumber must have been transported from far away, and the workers, guarded by expensive mercenaries, surely lived for many seasons in a primitive hamlet subsisting on salted supplies. There are seemingly no cracks in the wall, and the building was whitewashed only a few years back. The road is wide and beaten. Dozens of souls could hide if not in the buildings, then at least in the yard. The expenses and labor put into this fortress were worth many trading ships. Three armed people are on the ramparts, though you only see what's above their waistline. They're leaning on the parapet, right next to the gate, and you think you even notice a glimpse of a smile. They wear gambesons, each of them dyed differently, yellow, green, and linen gray. A woman in a yellow armor leans forward. She has long, curly, disorderly red hair, pointing in every possible direction. The combination of colors doesn't work at all. In the woods, one would have to shout to draw this much attention. There's still a fair distance between the two of you, but she speaks loudly. I hadn't seen a horse for years now. I just said it's weird to see such a large jackass, huh? Her voice is young and strong, with an accent that reminds you of the villages spread around ha uh, Havlavan. But no jackass would wear a saddle, I'd say. She exchanges a few words with a male guard wearing green, giving you more time to move closer. Well, this one here says there really are donkey saddles. Say, traveler, how hard is it to ride a horse? Yeah, let's be playful. She seems, like, playful. You wouldn't believe it. The lessons were a pain. You get off your horse and imitate the silly walk from the day that you followed your long journey. When your whole shell was crying... You illustrate the pain as you move your hand from your back to hips, thighs, and in return, the guards tell you about the time when they had to carry their friend with bitten off legs for three days straight through the heart of the woods. Meanwhile, the other guards open the gate. You may be in a good mood, the woman in the yellow jacket smiles at you, but don't get so noisy when you talk to our boss. The man never smiles. He has the world's suffering sculpted on his face. She leans you under the roof, which your palfrey can rest, tethered with a cord on a wooden post near some old hay. Once you're ready, go inside and speak with our boss. Maybe you're hungry? The other guards take care of various chores. They peek at your mount every now and then as they're splitting firewood, cleaning their clothes and weeding the garden patches, moving chairs. Two of them are making a rope. You head towards the inn, hearing the piercing scream of a boar from the other side of the yard. Yes, go in. New shelter unlocked. The locked windows make the air stuffy, and the weak fire in the stove hardly lightens up the hall. A muscular man is sweeping the floor uh, near the stairs, but after he glances at you, he leans the broom against the wall and heads behind the counter. You're lucky to show up. His voice is deep and soft, um, with a city-like accent. He observes you with a keen attention, yet avoids your eyes. I have a te keg of decent ale, wormwood, bog myrtle, juniper berries, cat's foot. He fills a mug carefully and puts it on the countertop. It's going to spoil soon, maybe today, and we don't drink here before the even. I hate to see the good stuff going to waste. His skin is dark, almost purple, rare even among the southern tribes, and his hair is naturally bluish. His clothes are quite fancy for manual labor. The elegant tunic wouldn't stand out in the city square. The planks let out a creak after every step you make, so you slow down a bit. You could swear the innkeeper made little to no noise. Here you go. He pushes the mug forward. 
But just so you know, my pelt of the north doesn't belong to Havavon. You can sleep on the floor if you wish so, but if you want a bed or a meal, you'll have to pay. We may have some leftovers from dinner, but I'll need to check. Um, let's see. Said he was distanced. Let's see. I won't stay here for long. I introduce myself. Yeah. He nods and fills another mug, this time with water. I guess there's no point in waiting for a Asterion, then. I'm glad to see someone's taking his place. Even my crew here hits the roads only if they need to see the healers of Howler's Dell, and they're more than resourceful. A road warden is always going to find work here in the north, though maybe not on the eastern road. He takes a mouthful of water and drinks it with a pleased sigh. There are no guests here at the time, or hardly ever. I can take a short break. For a brief moment he meets your eyes. Drink the ale. The dark room and wooden walls of the mug make the liquid look as brown as a chestnut. The lee in spring heats your nose, and the first sip is too complex, too flowery. While the brewer has used fancy ingredients, the exotic, the exotic licorice ruins the aftertaste. Now you know why there's so much left. Maybe it takes an acquired taste. The innkeeper nods. I was hoping to see someone willing to patrol the roads. Maybe you'll help me with a worrying thought I have. Which is... There are brigands in the woods. Our place is a stronghold, so I'm not afraid of an open strike, but they've made, they've gotten more active in the last two years. One day they may steal our furs, and I've no doubt they're the reason why merchants come here only once. Having bandits around gets expensive. He rubs his hands together, camouflaging his paws. I want you to reach Howler's Dell, northwest of here. It's the largest settlement around. I'm sure you'll get there sooner or later. Ask Theus, the mayor, about Glacia, the bloodthirsty wolf of a woman. I've heard rumors about a raid in the north. If Glacia is ready to break the truce with the locals, I'm willing to join forces with them to get rid of her band. Getting some water. He looks at a nearby dragon bone. Not too difficult, right? Just do it when you have a chance. A couple of days won't make much of a difference. I'll pay you two coins when you get back with the news. Fine? Oh, I mean, that seems fine. Great. What else do you need? Uh... See what he has for sale. I can go and pick up a few things for you. Some food for your travels to start with. Apples, nuts, and sausage. Not too many at once. We need to maintain our supplies. I've got an elk fur I don't need. Its buyer was caught by a pack of red wolves. Nice for a sleeping spot, just as nice for a wall. An almost untouched bowl of soap. Priceless for a traveler. You can't tell if he's being sarcastic. Made of fine oak ash. Strong, though you should have better supplies before making starting your own bathhouse. After you mentioned you'd like some more, something more useful on the roads, he looks down. I don't have any blades or armor to spare, but if you pay well, you can take one of our crossbows and a bunch of quarrels. A yew bow, wood cords, and the trigger needs just a bit of oil. It's as good as you can get without soaking it in magic. It takes a bit of muscle to draw, but even a sixteen-year-old could handle it. I won't sell it cheap, but I'm ready to give a discount to a helpful ally. Let's see what he has. Let's see. Definitely I'll buy some quarrels. And the meals. And I will buy the soap. Cool. Let's see if he knows anything about a Styrion. I think we'll finish up in the inn and rest, and then that will be good for today's stream. That seems like a nice stopping point. Are you now? He goes to the table and invites you to sit down with him. I don't think I'm going to be of much help. He rests his elbow on the tabletop and grunts quietly to clear his throat. But I do want you to find him, so... When asked about his intentions, he measures his words. Asterion and I made a risky deal. Well, a very promising one. Last time he was here, he took fifty coins. My half of the investment. 
He knocks on the table with a fist, anxiously. If you get my coin or at least find what happened to the guy, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed after bringing me the news. Ooh, is he a thief? He looks at a window and starts to play with a shutter. I just think Asterion ain't the kind of soul that would do such a thing. For him, it wasn't much of a fortune, and I'd risk saying he'd earned my trust. Not only mine, you know. It's easy for a road warden to make connections. He always had places to go and things to care for things to take care of. He rubs the table with his thumb, as if trying to clean an invisible stain. I've asked travelers. I've sent a couple of my pals to find him. No real news. I know he stayed in White Marshes for a day and was meant to do something for the people there. It's a village in the northwest. Just stay on the main road till you reach the bogs, then enter them. You may get there before dusk. So let me know once you find anything and we may yet return to this whole investment thing. Think about it. Um, what was in my inventory? So I've got supplies. I've got two coins left. The rods. Now I've got seven coins. Um. You'll spend the entire day taking care of smaller chores and allowing your shell and soul to rest. Eat a food ration. Yeah. Get our health back up. It's been a lazy day. Repairing your equipment and taking care of your mount didn't take nearly as much time as you'd expected, and you instead enjoy some refreshing water, observe your surroundings with a clear head, wander about, and stretch out. After a few hours, you feel rather bored, but at least you have an opportunity to gather your thoughts. At one point, the innkeeper invited you for a drink, asking you about the news. The windows are open, and while there's a few guards eating and drinking, the hall is clean. The innkeeper is dusting the counter and the shelves with a cloth. You again. Need anything? Um, we're not super hungry. Yeah, what's your inn doing here? Ah, so you know a thing or two after all. His mocking tone is soon replaced by a gentle smile. It was built long before we arrived. It didn't work out well for the previous owners. Once the war ended, they left. Not enough travelers, bad trade, and the villagers stick to themselves. We, however, came prepared, and now we're prospering. When you ask him how they can afford all the supplies, he aims his fingers, or he runs his fingers through his dark hair. Well, I'm not running an inn, but we don't rely on guests. We're the ones doing all the trading. My hunters are a clever bunch and stay safe in the forest. In exchange for furs, claws, and bones, we get what we need and more, both from north and south. He moves to the window and peeks outside. We have a good life here. We spent a whole lot on armor, crossbows, lumber, and spears. But in another ten, maybe twenty years, we'll have enough savings to move to Holoven and not work another day in our lives. We take risks, but smartly. The team is stronger than ever, and I have big plans for us. Is there a good story behind the inn's name? I mean, there is a story, but not a good one. He clears his throat. For years I wanted to have an inn called Pelt, but in my city it would be in bad taste. Taverns and inns named with a single word were cheap and have a nasty reputation. There was the Claw and Mugger, Basilisk, and Blissful, I think. The good places used at least two words. The Empty Barrel, I Rose in a Helmet, Empress's Smile. Pighead was the exception. It was a real dive, he chuckles. In my soul, it's still just called Pelt. Pelts are what you came here for, and that will make us reach our goals. Uh, let's look outside. Ooh, a well. The recently renovated wooden roof covers the well from rain and birds. One of the guards is enjoying a cold drink he drew with the bucket and tells you to use only as much water as necessary. The oak ash soap you own can help you get cleaner. Oh, yeah, here we go. Finally taking a bath. Oh. Okay, apparently that's all I can do. Alright. Well, that seems as good a place as any. Oh, wait, sleeping in a room. 
Can we do this? Do we have enough coins? Yeah, let's rent a room. Alright, so I'm gonna rent a room, uh, to end our stream today. And we will return. Well, let me read this first. You hear a thunderous roar. You rise to your feet and rub the sleep from your eyes. The doors are opening, people are shouting orders and words of warning. As you open the window, you see what's behind the commotion. Something is on the other side of the wall, trying to get through, and the guards are fighting it off with their torches, spears, and crossbows. Thanks to their light, you see the large furry paws placed on the top of the wall walk. As far as you can tell, the beast is but a single leap away from getting inside. Uh, let's help him. You look for your gambeson and blade, still a bit foggy in your thoughts, and once you find them, you struggle to get inside the jacket. As your habits kick in, you see the innkeeper right in front of you holding a candle. You're a guest. Stay here, he says without a shadow of hesitation. My team has no time to worry about outsiders. But at, just after his words, you hear cheerful laughter from the wall. Judging by the way they point their fingers and lower their weapons, the beast is fleeing. Well, I shouldn't expect people will need my help all the time. <laughs> The small room is quiet and far away from unwanted eyes. You take a calm bath, rest on a soft mattress, look through the window, and enjoy the minutes of safety. In the morning you find a stool with a large wooden plate bearing an aromatic breakfast, two boiled eggs, a cup of buttermilk, and some ibex offals. Downstairs the innkeeper is putting firewood into the stove. He asks if you, ha if you need anything. Let's see, does he have any leftovers? Yes, I feed them to our boar. I won't give them away for nothing. He tells you to wait, and leaves the building a few minutes, and returns with a wooden bucket with a long stick standing in a hook. Go through the gate and turn left. You'll see a bunch of bushes. We need some berries. Bring me a bucket full, and you'll be done in half an hour or so. Your horse could use a nap anyway, and I'll prepare something to fill you. The hook is not made of metal or wood. It's a long, curved claw, almost black. All right. So we've rested a bit, we've finally got our stats back up to a reasonable amount, and I think that is an excellent place to leave off for the night. Um, I am going to attempt to start streaming a little more regularly, hopefully on Thursday or Friday nights for a game like this. Um, thank you everybody who showed up, and this is a wonderful place to save and quit.